This presentation builds on the one about the for loop, so if you haven't watched that yet, you should do so before watching this one. Okay, so um, having done for loops where we uh, give a beginning and an ending value for our control variable, uh, we want to look at the case where we can't be so precise to begin with, where we don't know in advance uh, how many times the loop will have to be done. Uh, but in order to keep things simple and um, make it easy to compare the do while loop with the for loop, I'm going to start with an example that actually does exactly the same thing as the for loop did. And then later we'll branch out and see some more uh, appropriate uses of the do while concept. So here's the same program we did before, the one that prints the multiplication table, but this time I'm doing a do while loop instead of a for loop. So let's take a look here at exactly what we're doing. I'm starting out the same way by reading my number from a text box, converting it to a string, and clearing the list box. Now, instead of having a built-in control variable like we did with the for loop, nothing like that is provided. We have to do our own um, controls and set everything ourselves. So in order to mimic what the for loop does, I'm using a variable called j and setting it to 1 before I start the loop. And here's my condition, so I'm going to do this loop while j is less than or equal to 12. So going to the same upper limit that I did uh, with the for loop. I have exactly the same uh, statement in the middle of the loop. It's printing whatever my string, say it's 5, 5 times j equals, and then whatever that product is. And finally, um, I have to put the j equals j plus 1, the increment for j, in there myself. Uh, Visual Basic is not going to do it for me. And finally, I end up my uh, loop with the word loop instead of the word next, uh, which we used to end the for loop. Now, I just want to emphasize here, there is a potential to have an infinite loop. That means a loop that just keeps going and never stops. In fact, if your computer gets hung up, that's one of the common ways that that can happen. So when you're working with a while loop, you have to think carefully about what you're doing and um, are you always progressing, uh, doing something that will eventually get you to a point where the loop will stop. If not, then your program could have a problem. Okay, here's um, another example similar. Uh, this one just goes up to numm instead of to the constant 12, but you can see the whole principle is the same. I've got my j equals 1, my do while, and my condition, I want to keep going while j is less than or equal to this number. And um, I'm going to go ahead and print the same string, increment j, and keep looping until this condition becomes false. Okay, question. What happens if numm equals 0? Because I'm starting with j equals 1. So in fact, if this number is 0, this will never be true, and I'll just skip the whole uh, loop. I won't do anything. So essentially, if you start out with um, this value with, with a false uh, condition, the loop will never execute. And actually, back with the for loop, if I, if I were to start with a start valve that's actually bigger than the ending valve, the loop would never execute. So that can happen. Here's a little flow chart. So what we're doing is, as we start the loop, we test the condition and see if it's true. If it is true, we go ahead and execute the statements inside the loop, and we keep doing that until the condition becomes false, at which point we go on to whatever follows the loop. So in particular, again, the loop statements may never be done. Now there's a little variation of this. Instead of using a do while, you can do, use a do until. And the only difference is with the do until, um, it keeps doing the loop as long as the condition is false, and it stops when the condition becomes true. So it's do until this condition becomes true, rather than do while this condition is true. So if I wanted to have something comparable to do while var a is less than or equal to 5, um, which will keep going as long as var a is less than or equal to 5, I could do do until var a is greater than 5, and here again, um, this loop will keep going until this guy becomes true. So 
It just can be clearer sometimes to express it as an until with a condition that has to become true instead of a while with a condition that has to become false in order to stop the loop. Another little variation we can do is test at the beginning uh, at the end of the loop instead of the beginning, which would ensure that the loop code always gets done at least once. So here's a multiplication example. Again, I'm using the same example to keep everything simple. Um, set up the same way, set j equal to 1, and we have the do. We have our same line that we're used to uh, until and incrementing j, and we just loop until j is greater than 12. So um, here's a flowchart in that case. So you see we come in and we do the statements before we do anything else, so they will get done once. Then test if the condition is true. Since we're using a, an until, if it's not true, we'll keep going. And when it does become true, then we exit the loop and do what comes next. So all these options are available so you can customize your logic of your loop to whatever makes sense for your program. Okay, and we can look at this in the demo. Um, we open up Excel here. And um, if you, let's, let's run the macro. Uh, okay, I'll enter the number five. And uh, here it's the while loop. You can see it does the right stuff. I can also use the until loop and um, if I come over and look at the code, then let's scroll down to where that is. I've given you the code. You can see it's basically exactly the same thing that was on the slide and the same thing with the until loop. So you have both of those. You should step through them um, the way I showed you with the for loop so you can understand exactly what's happening. Okay, so let's close this guy. All right, now if you remember when we looked at if statements, we said they could be nested. That is, you can have an if statement inside another if statement. Well, the same thing is true with loops. You can have any kind of code inside a loop, including another loop. Uh, so what happens when you do that? Well, basically, the thing to know is that the inner loop is executed completely for all of its repetitions each time the outer loop is executed once. So here's an example. Um, and this one's really simple, and it just prints j and k. So my outer loop has j going from 1 to 12, and my inner loop has k going from 1 to 4. So when I do j equals 1, I'll do j equals 1, k equals 1, j1, k2, j1, k3, j1, k4. That finishes this loop. Then I'll do my next value for j, which would be 2, and I'll go through all the values of k again, 1, 2, 3, and 4, with j equal to, and so on. So here's what we'll print, um, at least for the beginning, and here is j equal to 1 with all the k's, j equal to 2 with all the k's, starting the 3, and so on. All right, now let's add a little something. Suppose I put um, an extra line in here, and just say I finish j uh, equals whatever, after I finish the k loop. So the last line in the loop tells me what value of j I was doing. So here's what's going to print. I'll, I'll do for j equals 1 all the four values of k, and then I'll get to that line and I'll say finish j equal 1. Then I'll print all the values again when j equal 2, finish j equal 2, and so on. Okay, let's put this together and make a complete multiplication table. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to build up a line that's a whole line of the multiplication table using the inner loop. So starting with j equal 1, I'm going to, um, each time through this inner loop, I'm going to add a piece. So the first time, I'm going to say, all right, I'll have j times k equal 1. So 1 times 1 equals 1. Then I'll have 1 times 2 equal 2, 1 times 3 equals 3, 1 times 4 equals 4, um, and I'll print that line. Then I come back and I do it again, only this time k, j equal 2. So I'll go through all the values again with, of k with j equal 2, and so on. And I have the demo for that over here. 
uh, oops, sorry, I guess I closed it, um, here we go. All right, so let's run it. All right, and we want the nested loop, so let's say we're doing um, 5 and 3. So you can see the outer loop does a line, so I'll do a line for j equal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the inner loop goes from 1 to 3, so I have 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and so on. If I make it equal 4 instead, then we go up to 4. I can increase this also. Let's make it 7. And you can play around with it. The interesting thing, though, is to go over to the code and um, set a breakpoint and just step through a few times so you can see it working step by step so you get the feeling for how it works. That's really important, and it's why I post these for you so you can experiment with them. Try different values and so on.